this is this gonna work now? Yep. Right. Yeah, um album's got a few six love sounds. Um basically it's based by Justin Timberlake, obviously. Um really released in 2006. Uh, but, uh, main production, main, the main labels for it, the Jive and Zomba. Um, the genre is kind of like a mix between a lot of them. There's dance pop, there's R and B, there's pop, there's a tiny bit of rock in there as well. Um, it was recorded in Timberland Studios, Thomas Crown Studios in Virginia Beach, and that was released over 2000. That was produced over 2005 into early 2006, and the album released in late 2006. Um, yeah, the main producers are Justin Timberlake, uh, Timberland, and uh, Nate Hills, who is Timberland's protege. Um, creating our film, yeah, they had a bit of few um, road, road bumps in, in the process, but when they, once they got everything down, um, the problems they faced was uh, they had no direction, no ideas to go off, so they only had one thing to go off, and that was one song of the previous album, which was Justified, and that one song was Crammy River, which was released by Tim, which was uh, produced by Timbaland in his previous album, which was wrote um, about his breakup of, uh, uh, about Justin Timbaland's breakup with Britney Spears. Um, basically, uh, and the sister of that song was what goes around comes around, which was wrote from, which was wrote in his point of view, but from a friend's experience who, who, who experienced a similar thing. Um, what actually made came the idea of making the album so like uh, dancey and more electronic was uh, Hit Hills was spent one night in a nightclub um, listening to kind of thing, just kind of dance music, and the, he thought that he took the ideas back to Timberland because he knew that everyone was going crazy in the nightclubs for that kind of for this kind of genre of music. He thought people were having a rave, and he thought that that might be a good idea, a good direction to go in because well, that's what a lot of people were listening to at the minute, and he wanted to go in that kind of direction, but still having the element of R and B and pop in there too. What year was this out, by the way? 2006. Um, but the inspirations for this album at the time, like the old inspiration for the other album was like past, like Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, and stuff like that. And this uh, this um, album takes a slightly different direction with uh, influences such as, such as Prince, David Bowie, Motorhead, The Killers, and The Strokes. Just going by the um, kind of instrumentations of it and how it's produced and that kind of aspect of it. Um, futuristic sound. Uh, a lot of the instruments have something to do with that, which is like the synth, which used to plug your plugins on, um, on uh, I can't remember the um, thing they used, but it was something like that, it was studio or something. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of vocals, which have a lot of effects on it, um, which I'll come to later. Drum kits in the past, which were kind of played in using the um, DW and and obviously used in the studio by proper instruments, the pianos and the keyboards and the, and the lyrics also helped with futuristic elements as well with the kind of words that he used. Um, for external input, the producer they had, uh, they had Rick Rubin, who was working on in uh, David Bowie's um, studio. And then Tim, uh, Timberland and Timberlake approached him, said he wanted, he wanted his help on the album to create to create a good album to start. And with Rick Rubin's um, um, reputation for producing good music, that's how they wanted to do that. And with with Rick Rubin behind him, there's nothing really to actually go wrong with the album because of his experience, and he knows what went where, he knows what fit and where. And with his experience, he helped create the song, uh, another song all over again, which was the last song of the beat on the album. Uh, Jimmy Douglas, uh, he helped with creating the effects on the vocals with Sexy Back. Um, originally the song was, the instrumentation was the exact same, but the, the original uh, vocals without these, um, without the effects on it sounded a bit empty and a bit undeveloped. And then while in the, t in the studio, Justin Timberlake said to him, he says, could you just put some effects on my vocals? To give, to give some of that oomph and that extra detail and then he put in uh, a trash plugin which also helped with the effects on the uh, vocal as well um, the artists that helped out were T.I. which was on the song My Love uh, he helped some inputs with the lyrics as well 
and also helps with the uh, instrumentation of it and how the cool things work. Uh, and Will I Am on the song Damn Girl. Uh, him, uh, him and Tim Blake uh, created a production team called Jawbreakers, and they helped a lot with the. Because um, Will I Am being a producer as well in his own right, also helped out with um, the production side of that just that one song, but also. Um, Mickey had a bit of input with other songs as well on that album. Um, yeah, the production side of it basically come down to it. It was, it was really all the way down to the, the three I mentioned produ before: Timberland, Timberlake, and Hills, which is like the overall production to it. And without Timberland's background influence and helping artists like Nelly and Nelly Furtado and artists like that, also working with Sierra and artists like that making the kind of electronic sounds that they had on their albums at the time. And with Nate, with uh, Hills' <coughs> ideas from um, the nightclub scenes and how influential that was, and with Tim, when, when just the Tim Blake songwriting abilities, musical abilities to play them, nothing would have come off that album because they all, they all had the input from different backgrounds that they had, and they all worked in to work together and mold together. Um, transitions for the songs, uh, won't be able to hear it on this mega mix, but the main example for this song is if you listen to the song Sexy Ladies, each song they had um, they had like a, a medley at the end, of, uh, kind of a transition at the end of it where the song stops and it kind of like went into uh, another track at the end, but it still classes the same track. And then this song it kind of played in, and then with the other track started out, the transition. A, a normal track, a normal album goes into a track and it kind of, the song stops and it kind of jumps a bit and then it goes into another song. Whereas this album, if you listen to it on an iPod or a computer in, in iTunes or something, the transition is so smooth that you think it's, just, you, you think it's the same track and it's not it's a completely different track. Um, and it's not the only one that it happened with. Um, with it happened with Future Sense Love Sounds into Sexy Back and it happened with My Love into Love Stone. And with, with Timberland's influence, that that actually happened because that's what he did with his album with Nelly Furtado. Basically, when it's them two, like they can make them stop with the production team. And sum it up, yeah, um, it was well received by the critics and everything. Like, listened to, I've listened to it, and they said it had that it all sounded like a new take on pop music and R&B music rather than just sounding like a normal album like you listen to like today you hear with Rihanna and stuff like that. It actually takes on a kind of a futuristic element which still sounds futuristic compared to music today, unless you listen to house music and stuff. But compared to pop music now, it still sounds so futuristic with the music that they play and how they play it and the instruments that they use and the vocals and the lyrics and everything like that. Just that also helps it sound so futuristic as well. And then um, basically yeah that's it. Um, Okay, so okay. Any questions? Hands up, if you want to ask a question, they can choose it. Yeah, I'll keep the music on, it's not finished yet. Okay, just turn it down a tiny bit and move this to the right hand, slide me out of it. It's Jack. Does the future part in the name of the album have anything to do with um, well, basically, they had to. I don't want to put this on because it didn't really do anything with the, with, the, um, with the production side of it. Basically, they had a massive deadline to meet because the, because the record label like, put them under a lot of pressure. Um, and with, Tim, with, with Justin Timberlake not having any actual direction to go in because he had nothing, because he thought he lost his, all his techniques and his balances and his, and his vocal techniques, he had, no, he had no idea what to do. And when he finally came up with something, um, the record, the record label was quite strict with that, and he had to come up with a name. And we, we, probably with the, the, with the type of songs that were on the album, kind of do it was sexual and love and things like that. And because they sounded a bit futuristic, that's probably what come, that probably what came with the future sex love sounds album because it sounds a bit of element in it and sexual in it, and it sounds so futuristic. But it just needs to do with that. Josh. Um, just the one specific collaborator who had the most impact on the sound of the album. Yeah, um, so Tim works on all his albums, but the other one that had the main impact, I'd say, is Rick Rubin and Jimmy Douglas. There's the kind of two of them, two of them had the input. Jimmy Douglas was the engineer, but Rick Rubin came in as assistant producer as well. And um, 
because Rick Rubin also helps with a lot of the albums on the all of the songs on the album have a bit of kind of like a kind of distorted kind of feel to it. Where Sexy Back you can hear it a lot anyway. And that also helps with the main and that's what made Sexy Back. If you listen to Beauty Sex Love Sounds now, probably the only two records you actually hear of that are My Love and what goes around two not sorry, three records, but two records for the actual most sound most futuristic are My Love and Sexy Back. And both of them influences had Jimmy Douglas on it and Rick Rubin on it to also help produce that kind of thing. To also bring it out that full of oomph and as well as another song which Rick Rubin was mainly working on, but he also had a bit of assistance with them other two songs as well. James. Um what you keep saying about like futuristic, but what do you mean? Like how do you define futuristic sound? Kind the of way both. it's produced or the actual sound of the music. I bet both. Um because the production with Timberland's influences as a DJ as well. He knows what fits in where, and he knows that with musical influence as well, he can also look towards the future and how things you want to sound. And the, the way that the, some effects as well that are used on there as well. And that also helps with the futuristic element. It sounds... Compared to music today, it doesn't really sound anything like a lot of albums don't use that kind of thing. And at the time with 2006, it wasn't really a lot of... A lot of albums being released using that kind of thing, but music technology was only was coming a lot out of there, and it's not, it, it wasn't really as... as um, as, as advanced as it is today, even though it was only like seven years ago, uh, six, no, seven, eight years ago, wasn't as it wasn't as acclaimed as it is now. A lot more technical base as it is now. Whereas 2006, they only had a lot of things to work with, and so that's how they managed to make it sound so futuristic, with, even though they were limited in technology compared to what we are now. Because it's changed a lot over the period of eight years, and with the way they've made it sound with just what they had then. They have a lot of things we have now. So that's what makes it sound futuristic as well as it does. Like, it, it, like if you listen to this album now, if you've never heard this album before, and you listen to this album like this year or next year, you would have thought that it was produced this year or next year. Because the way it sounds and everything. Yeah. Probably. Sure. Yeah, I'm ready this bit more. Um, do you think with modern pop music, the whole overproduction, perfect production artists like Timberlake, makes for better music, or would you say it's just like recycled production techniques used to disguise commercialism and incompetent musicians? Um, no, it's um, it apparently a bit of both actually, because they wanted to um, fit in with how things are sounding now, but they also want to take it another step. Yeah. Like if you listen to MJ, MJ and things like that, I'm using MJ Michael Jackson as, as a as um, a reference, you can't really blame me really. No, 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 he's but, um, <laughs> but if you listen to some of his albums as well, he wanted to take things an extra step further rather than just being a normal pop artist, he wanted to extend the barriers as well. <laughs> and that's what Justin Timberlake and Timberland are doing with things like that. Rather than just being known as a pop and R&B artist, they want to spread the barriers of being, being known in, in other genres as well. And they want to be known as other, other cultural experiences, which still like this, like this song Chop Me Out Now, it kind of like, it kind of blends in with hip hop and things. A lot of Timberland stuff is, because he's a DJ as well, and it kind of, it kind of spreads along all of the genre, a lot of other genres as well, the way it's played and the way it sounds, and it could be mistaken with certain things, even though if the Nintendo genre was supposed to be something, it could be something completely different. Um, so yeah, basically that's it. It, could be, it can be commercially acclaimed, and it could be a new way to bring out new music. Josh? Um, who wrote the songs? Were they co-written or was it? Yeah, they were co-written. Um, Timbaland, uh, for, uh, here's an example of what goes on and comes around. Um, and I said the only inspiration they actually had for that was Crime and River, which was written by Timbaland. 